Hello Summoners, and welcome back to another one of our videos here on the Pro Guides YouTube channel. In response to popular demand from you guys, we've actually decided to make a video on counters to OP picks during patch 9.12. We're booting up one of our older series, so welcome back to another episode of Pro Counters. Today we'll cover the best counter picks to the current meta. Also, thank you guys for all of the suggestions. We're always looking to improve our content, so you can continue to give us any feedback or let us know what you think our videos are doing well in the comment section down below. After this video, make sure that you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel, as well as ProGuides.com, where we've partnered with pro players to create courses to level up your gameplay. It's the best and all-in-one platform for improving and getting better at League of Legends. Now, let's get this series rolling. Kicking it off in the top lane, our counterpick recommendations for this patch are Kled and Pantheon. Both of these picks are capable of accelerating games and they're equipped with strong laning, long range ultimates, and passive abilities that make them exceptional tower divers. Pantheon is a notorious lane bully. He's able to bully his opponents out of lane with his Q harass or pick up solo kills when they get greedy. Due to the nearly global range on his ultimate, Pantheon has no issue taking Ignite instead of Teleport, which will further increase your kill potency. As a summoner spell, taking Ignite will also help you counter champions with a lot of healing such as Renekton or Vladimir, and against a lot of our other S tier picks like Riven and Jax, Pantheon basically auto wins that laning phase. After poking down with Q, he'll have no issue winning any fights versus nearly any champion. During the laning phase, Pantheon will typically not alt onto his opponent since he's usually saving it to pressure the other lanes around the map. This means that at level 6, you have to be careful as the Pantheon player because your opponents will hit their power spikes while you won't. He'll have to continue to poke down and disengage any all in attempts from champions like Riven and Jax because those two champions ultimates are are much more effective during the 1v1 and their level 6 power spike. The strength of Pantheon is winning lane before level 6, and if you've built up a big CS or kill lead, he's still able to win fights in spite of the enemy's best attempts. Your ultimate will help you continue to snowball your lead, accelerate the game, and put pressure onto the other lanes as well. Successful ganks will allow you to stay even with your opponents, and also continue to put other opponents further and further behind. As a result, split pushers will find that it may be difficult to realize their side lane fantasy, since their team will constantly be getting man dropped on. Kled is a champion that is able to fill a similar niche to Pantheon, and while he won't man drop on his foes, he can charge headfirst and initiate a dive or a team fight and give his team a one-way Sivir ult. The biggest strength that Kled has in the current meta is his ability to stand up to the strongest top laner in the game, Tom Kench. Due to the nature of Kled's mounting and dismounting, it makes it for Tom to actually kill Kled. As Kled gets closer and closer to dismounting, Tom will begin to have to think about holding his cooldowns for after Kled's dismount. This effectively lowers Tom's DPS. If Kled starts a fight dismounted, he also doesn't have many issues remounting as long as he's not primed for a stun. Against other S tier champions such as Renekton, Aatrox, Riven, or Vladimir, it's really as simple as landing your abilities and going for long, all-in level trades. Kled's early laning phase is extremely strong because he can win all-ins versus many champions. A lot of it has to do with his high base damage, but a lot of it also has to do with his dismount. Similar enough to Pantheon, Kled also has the option of using Ignite because of his long long range and gauge range, but can just as effectively use teleport. Use it depending on your matchup that you have, and matches where the extra ignite will give you that much needed kill pressure, such as a Renekton or a Vladimir, maybe use ignite. Whenever you value the safety net or the ability to teleport bottom lane, use teleport instead. Both of these champions are good counters to split pushing and late game champions because you can get early leads then look to make plays elsewhere while your opponents must catch up. You want to continue to take advantage of 5v4 situations or pull your opponents into 5v5 situations while they're weaker than you. Alright, let's move on to the jungle. In the current jungle meta, we see an abundance of tanks and strong mid game champions in the jungle. Our first counter will be Ivern. Now, Ivern is a staple counter pick to tanks. There's one exception with Nunu though since Willump is easily able to turn Turn Daisy into his next meal, rest in peace little Daisy, but even then Ivory can still keep the duo in check before level 6. Aside from tanks, he does a good job at keeping Evelyn and Hecarim down since they need some levels before they can become serious threats. Ivory will have no problem invading and then giving them a hard time to champions that need their mid game levels, experience, and gold. Their lack of very early kill pressure gives Ivory the ability to skirmish with them or even counter gank and ruin any opponent's chance for snowballing. 
Obviously, Ivern's biggest strength as well is because of his counter jungling, and him able to counter jungle early camps away by smiting them slows down the progress of Hecarim and Evelyn reaching their level 6. Of course, Ivern's added utility provides a huge asset for his team. Right now, mid game fights are king, and they're a huge factor in winning games, so the extra shields allow his teammates to survive burst and, of course, deal more damage. Ivern's team fighting is excellent as a result of his big shields and strong peeling. Picking him makes it difficult for your enemies to eliminate priority targets and could potentially turn around a big team fight. Ivern has a couple of main weaknesses, but the thing you need to be most careful of is strong early game junglers such as Lee Sin, Nidalee, or sometimes the Kha'Zix matchup. If you get caught out in some of these matchups or you get placed against a really good Nidalee smurf, your life is going to be a nightmare and you'll probably never be able to get into the game. Ivern is a very niche champion who fits into niche compositions, but that's why he's on a counter video, not S tier on the tier list. Another pretty big counter at the moment is Kindred. Most junglers will find difficulty dueling Kindred early on because of her big range advantage. With this range advantage, she can kite her opponents or simply disengage if she judges that the fight is going to be unfavorable. She'll have the ability to skirmish in the river or even look for invades if her laners have priority. Kindred puts your opponents on a timer because without you needing to sacrifice any jungle pressure in some matchups, eventually Kindred is going to be a massive threat as a long range scaling ADC. Even against champions with strong burst or lockdown such as Vi or Evelyn, Kindred's ultimate can be incredibly useful. The ability to stop and stall fights and prevent attempts at bursting a teammate makes Kindred a huge nuisance in team fights as well as a devastating counter ganker. Both of these picks have the ability to bully out meta champions during the early stages of the game, making it difficult for their enemies to take advantage of their big mid game power spikes and scale effectively into the late game. Alright, let's talk about mid lane. For a while now, there have been very strong AD assassins such as Zed, Talon, and Pike, and one of the champions that does very well into them is Echo. Echo is equipped with great wave clear and the ability to take on champions with strong burst. Assassins have difficulty killing Echo because of his ultimate and in many cases cannot match Echo's strong wave clear. These champions like we mentioned such as Zed, Talon, and Pike will only ult onto Echo only to find that he can just use his ult to avoid taking damage or heal back a big portion of the damage that he took. The fact that Echo is able to constantly push in waves makes it difficult for his lane opponents to look for good roam opportunities and create leads around the map. While he may not necessarily beat his opponents in every single fight, it's still very possible to die to level 2 Talon. One thing that he can do is effectively neutralize their effectiveness and simultaneously prove to be a greater threat in teamfights. The point is that Echo is always able to push the wave with his Q, which makes the Pike or the Talon stay in lane, and that's exactly what you want to do versus an Assassin. The Pike or the Talon in their ideal situations will buy Tiamat first item, push the wave, and go kill your bot lane. If they do that in this situation where Echo's always pushing the wave, he can get plates, make them miss minions and XP, that sort of thing. Echo is also a pretty good split pusher and is able to tower dive quite frequently. When his opponents can't contest lane priority, Echo can instead be the one looking for opportunities to gank other lanes. Against these assassins, he continues to be difficult to kill in the later stages of the game. Taking things like Zhanya's, Proto Belt, and of course his ultimate makes him really hard to kill. This allows him to have priority in the side lane split push, thus commit to split pushing or regrouping with his team after he crashed the wave. There's a new pick in the wild wild west of solo queue and that's middle lane Camille. Now, Camille mid counters high mobility champions, making her a great pick into mobile playmakers such as Zed or LeBlanc. As a result of her good early skirmishing strength, as well as her strong mid game power spike once she completes Trinity Force, many high elo players are onboarding the Camille mid hype train. Against champions that may out trade or beat Camille in lane, Camille is amazing at setting up mid lane ganks for her jungler. Remember that League is a team game. Picks like Malzahar aren't strong because they solo killed their opponent on cooldown, it's because they set up free kills to begin snowballing games and eventually get strong enough they can kill you by theirself. Camille is capable of making plays by herself and then also with her team. She's a versatile pick who's able to play through many different matchups even when they don't favor her and abuse a couple of prevalent picks. Make sure to take advantage of Camille's strong skirmishing and team fighting capabilities. She's able to briefly isolate her targets with her ult, making her dominant in disjointed fights or initiating on misposition priority targets such as an ADC. Just like many S tier picks, both Camille and Echo have excellent mid games. The advantage that they hold is that they have favorable matchups into assassins as well as tools to make plays elsewhere on the map. Alright, moving on to the bot lane now, we see a couple of familiar faces. First up, let's talk Lucian. 
The level 2 power spike meme aside, Lucian's lane bully presence makes him a solid pick against many of the current top tier picks. Sivir, Ezreal, and Kai'Sa all struggle to trade versus him during the early game. In several different support matchups, Lucian will have kill potential and be able to snowball leads into the mid game and push for a win. As the most effective user of press the attack in League of Legends, Lucian can win trades or fights at early levels simply by weaving in autos between spells and then getting your press the attack proc. The trending essence reaver build has also led to some newfound strength for the revenge driven purifier. It's resulted in Lucian snowballing even harder because of the earlier access to crit chance as well as more damage throughout the game. Also, don't forget how good CDR is on this champ. Lucian's high mobility gives him the ability to chase down his opponents for kills if they're ever in a bad spot. After getting your lead, do not let up on the pressure. Continue to snowball against your opponents while they're still weaker than you. Keeping on the same train of thought, Draven is another pick who is strong into virtually every other S tier pick at the moment in the bottom lane. He may not hold positive win rates versus all of them, but he's still able to dominate them in the early game and attempt to snowball his leads into objectives and teamfight victories. There's little margin for error playing against strong late game champions like Jinx and Sivir. Experienced Draven players will have no issues finding leads early on and constantly pressuring their opponents. You must take advantage of Draven's potency in all ins and drawn out fights by looking for opportunities to extend trades and mow down your opponents. It does kind of suck that your opponents might be ticking time bombs. The Jinx of the Sivir at some point is going to be a god at 6 items, but you just have to be able to end the game before then. The common theme for bot lane right now is that you need to pick lane bullies. The strongest picks right now scale really hard, so you need to pick champions who can get early game leads and simply outpressure their opponents before they become relevant. Finally, let's jump onto support. Every game goes the same way. The enemy support locks in Nautilus in champion select, Thresh, or Pike, and kills your ADC over and over again. Before you know it, the game is over. That is, unless you pick Morgana. Her black shield renders these S tier picks nearly useless during the laning phase and continues to hinder their presence throughout the game. In lane, she can block enemy CC and poke with her own abilities until her enemies are low enough to commit to kills. Without leads, aggressive supports will have difficulty playing to their strengths of engaging and making picks on your ADC. On the other hand, Morgana is fine scaling into later stages of the game. She's able to match melee supports in terms of crowd control, but is much safer because of her longer range and itemization. In most games, both Morgana and her opponent will be looking for game-winning picks towards the mid and late game, but Morgana is also able to block her enemy's attempts with Black Shield. Basically, she can do what her enemies are able to do because she renders them nearly useless. Currently, Janna and Lux are two of the strongest supports in the game, accompanied by Yumi in competitive play. Their utility, poke, and safe laning make them difficult for champions to deal with them because they're oppressive and lane and scale well. Sona is a very strong response to these enchanters. She's able to win trades, sustain the damage they deal, and outscale everyone. She is the strongest scaling support without question. Sona's biggest weakness, of course, is that she's prone to all ends from the likes of supports with heavy engage. Against lane bullies, though, she's able to win through War of a Sona is the kind of champion to get really weak early game and put her so far out of the game that you think she's useless, but eventually she somehow turns the tables and shows them that eventually you're always going to fight the battle of 30 minute Sona. Aftershock Lux, who's taken Summoner's Rift by Storm, has found her footing in the meta as a result of her ability to survive bursty engage and poke down other threats. Against Sona, Lux will find Aftershock to be virtually useless in lane because Sona slowly whittles down her opponents with poke. Several S tier picks will have a hard time shutting down Sona, while Morgana, Lux, and Janna may do a good job of disengaging and countering aggressive picks, they can't effectively neutralize Sona, whose main job is empowering her teammates with auras. The good thing about this champion is that in her winning matchups, her opponents basically have no kill pressure. This will open the door to building hard scaling items such as Archangels or Magi's. Sometimes it's literally impossible to kill Sona late game with that big Archangel shield and a Magi's 25 stat. Everyone starts to slowly fall behind as you outscale them and become a secondary damage threat while also being an enchanter 30 to 40 minutes in to the game. With that being said, we've covered all of our OP counter picks for 9.12. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go cash in on some free LP, and we'll see you guys next time on the Rift.